All right. Here's my presentation on funk, outsider music, outsider art, art brute, bootlegs, found footage, poet moldy, wabi sabi, and more. Postmodernism. A response to my How Can We Be Inspired by Jazz? Muddy Waters saying the blues had a baby and they named it rock and roll. Well, who was Funk's daddy? Black gospel music. James Brown moved the emphasis from the two and the four to the one. He incorporated the grunts and yells from pastors and black churches. He shouted his lyrics. Rhythm was more important than melody. Bass and drums take center stage with the guitar and piano often just stepping back and comping in funk music. Bootsy Collins from Parliament Funkadelic. Fusion music, like Mahavishnu Orchestra, is jazz played loud and fast like rock and roll, incorporating world music rhythms and instruments. Rage Against the Machine combined funk with metal. When many sounds are heard at once, it can be called cacophony. Cacophony means uh, bad sound. Cacos, bad. Here's some artists' interpretations of cacophonies. What would this sound like if it were to be played? Here we've got some synesthesia and some onomatopoeia words. Bop, wow, zap, whoosh, bonk, vavoom, bella, or bellow, (laughs) twister. Here's a album, Cacophony of Terror. Those are just a lot of images that came up when I searched for cacophony. The word funk referred to, and still does, refer to a strong odor. It means to smoke, fumigare. Funky, meaning musty, was documented in 1784, which in turn led to a sense of earthy. In jazz slang, they would say something is deeply or strongly felt. Even though in white culture, the term funk can have negative connotations of odor or being in a bad mood, that person seems to be in a funk, In African communities, the term funk, while still linked to body odor, had the positive sense that a musician's hard-working, honest effort led to sweat, and from their physical exertion came an exquisite and superlative performance. In early jam sessions, musicians would encourage one another to get down by telling one another, now, put some stank on it. As early as 1907, jazz songs carried titles such as Funky, In the late 1950s and 60s, when funk and funky were increasingly in the context of jazz music, the terms still were considered inelicate and inappropriate for use in polite company. According to one source, New Orleans-born drummer Earl Palmer was the first to use the word funky to explain to other musicians that their music should be made more syncopated and danceable. Jazz and funk musicians manipulate our emotions with dissonance, making us feel uneasy. Playing atonally or playing multiple notes very close together can sound bad. Polyrhythms or acceleration can create a building intensity. By resolving, the musicians give us a sense of comfort and release, such as in A Day in the Life, the Beatles have a crescendo of noise from an orchestra that resolves on an E major chord. Visual artists can do the same thing. Portions of the canvas can be off-putting, jarring, clashing, and then there can be a quiet space for eyes to rest. Notice how the artist uses teal for empty space here. This piece is by David Grudniski. You can really see the paint stacked up. the, The paint has a thickness, and this seems to come out of the canvas. Meditating Master with Bird in Nest and Dancing Snake by Magus. What color is used to make a chill break for the eyes in these pieces? (laughs) 
The term outsider art is applied to a wide variety of art. It can mean folk art, art made by people outside the academic art world, or people who made art without formal training, or even art by criminals and the mentally ill. These are some pieces that came up when I searched for outsider art. Classic funk album covers. Notice the grit and noise. I call this noise. That's a synesthesia as well. When there's these little speckles of gradient. And they're simplifying color by having extreme contrast. The pianist is playing in yellow and all the musicians backing him up are in blue. And here we see a girl in pink, yellow, and green. Purple is associated with funk music. It's an indulgent color. Here's uh, Prince riding on a purple motorcycle in a purple suit. Pedro Bell made most of Parliament Funkadelic's covers. He portrayed them as an invasion force, a technicolor assortment of alien superheroes, Afronauts, mutants, and cosmic warriors. Their mission was to fight the good fight to rise and prevail in the ideological musical funk wars. Um, this album cover was censored. They said that this was inappropriate, so they covered it up with this. The album they were too scared to print. Peek here, look! Funkadelic, the electric spanking war babies. Does this art let you imagine what the music will sound like? Cosmic slop. Funkadelic. This person seems to have like bees for the afro, and then there's another person inside. And then he's got a necklace, a, a chain necklace, but it's bells. Bootleg album covers were sometimes made by underground cartoonists. These weren't approved of by an art director or management team. Listening to live recordings with imperfections, even coughs and unintentional sounds can take on an essential quality. Have you ever preferred a live recording to the song's studio version? And um, like the audience clapping or responding or somebody coughing. When you hear it again and again, it becomes part of the song. You'd like miss it if it wasn't there. Here's a Rolling Stones and a Who unofficial bootleg album covers. And this artist uh, chose to draw a little picture for each song title. Give me shelter, happy, it's all over now. Jumpin' Jack Flash, Dead Flowers. Outsider art can fascinate us. These artists seem uninhibited, unpredictable, their compositions spontaneous and loose, discovering play as they worked. Does this piece pique your curiosity? This is by Robert Kippur. It's kind of wrong to have hands coming into the canvas from the sides without showing us who they belong to. And this person's lantern kind of looks like a hat, and this person's hand kind of looks like a piece of meat. Has his skin been flayed off? And what is going on here with this blue shape? Is it another person? Is it this guy's shadow? I don't know. It's so weird and cool. All right, so let me make a big leap to saying that horror films are kind of funky and gritty. Some horror film directors leapt into filmmaking without formal training, making unpredictable and surprising results. Um, some people said that the Texas Chainsaw Massacre was made by people who didn't know the rules. And uh, they hadn't heard things like, you can't do that, so they just did them. 
And uh, Sam Raimi said, we funded Evil Dead ourselves, so we didn't have any producers saying, no, you can't do that. Found footage can be fun. Check out Everything is Terrible or Kaleidoscope or Mystery Science Theater 3000. Sometimes corporate educational movies that the public were never meant to see can escape and be seen and made fun of, watched ironically. That can be a lot of fun. Some famous artists have suffered mental health issues, including Vincent Van Gogh, George O'Keefe, and even Michelangelo. I lead a miserable existence. I live wearied by stupendous labors and beset by a thousand anxieties. And thus I lived for some 15 years now, and never an hour's happiness have I had, said Michelangelo to his father. Another Michelangelo quote I like is, People call my work incredible, but if they knew how hard I worked at it, how long it took me to make it, they would not consider that incredible. I'm paraphrasing. Some have thought Mark Chagall must have been crazy by seeing his art. He was Jewish in Russia, and he was not permitted to go to school. Chagall would later say that there was no art of any kind in his family's home, and the concept was totally alien to him. When Chagall asked a schoolmate how he had learned to draw, his friend said, Just go find a book in the library, idiot. Choose any picture you like and copy it. He soon began copying images from books and found the experience so rewarding, he decided he wanted to become an artist. Chacal's got some weird stuff. This head is not on the person's body. Here's a crucified figure floating in the sky. This guy's running with a ladder. Poet Maudlet. Literally, the accursed poets. The French have long celebrated the grit and grungy beauty found in mad poets. Abuse of drugs and alcohol, insanity, crime, violence, often resulting in early death are typical elements of the biography of a poet Maudit. Other examples were Salvador Toma from Italy. Here's Charles Baudelaire. Here's Le Comte de Montremont, Arthur Rimbaud, and Paul Verlaine. So if you're interested in reading some gritty poetry about violence, sin, drinking too much, going mad, uh, check out those guys. <laughs> Art Brut, the French artist Jean de Buffet, collected outsider art and called it Art Brut. These works were created from solitude and from pure, authentic creative impulses where the worries of competition, acclaim, and social promotion do not interfere. Artists in the West making art, participating in it with the intention to be sold, that is not as raw as art made by artists who have no interest in showing their work in galleries or getting into art school. And um, De Buffet himself painted with unconventional materials, including paste, sand, tar, and straw. Some use the term naive art to describe art by untrained artists. This is by a Cuban artist. And the perspective is wrong, but that's okay. And there's a chicken here watching them play dominoes. Here's Joe Minter's African Village in America. And I realize when I pick these things out, it's my own aesthetics are showing. Um, if someone else were to make this and choose art brute examples and funk outsider art examples, they'd choose completely different things. So I highly recommend you go research on your own. Wabi Sabi is a composite of two interrelated aesthetic concepts, Wabi and Sabi. It can be translated as subdued asture beauty, rustic patina, impermanence, suffering, and emptiness. Um... I've heard it described as the cup with a chip in it is more beautiful and has more character than the cup without any chip in it. And uh, I include Charlie Brown's Christmas tree because I, I think that 
kind of encapsulates Wabi Sabi. It's a Japanese concept. Outsider music. This is a rabbit hole that's fun to go down. Music by self-taught or naive musicians. The term is usually applied to musicians who have little or no traditional musical experience, who exhibit childlike qualities in their music, or who suffer from intellectual disabilities or mental illness. Unintentional renegades. They don't break the rules because they don't know there are rules. This is the Shags, and here is Wesley Willis, the king of all rock and roll. A quote about Wesley Willis is, Do not presume a lack of agency that Willis, by most accounts, indeed possessed. Winterbottom, a Chicago-based artist who roomed with Willis for roughly seven years during the 90s, described a man who couldn't cook or tie his shoelaces, but was also an extraordinarily self-driven artist with a shrewd sense of promotion. A friend of mine went to see a Wesley Willis concert, and he said, he said, I, I went to talk to Wesley Willis after the show, and I said, oh, I was hoping you'd play some of your old songs. And Wesley Willis said, my old songs are all crap. Buy my t-shirt. Oh, well, I just want to say I, I like your old songs, and, and I, like, I, I, I like them. I hoped you'd play them. And Wesley again said, I don't like the old songs. They suck. Buy my t-shirt. Buy my sticker. <laughs> Trout Mask Replica um, is considered one of the worst, ugliest, weirdest albums of all time. And it was inducted into the Library of Congress's National Recording Registry. Supposedly, he was a cruel taskmaster who wouldn't let the musicians leave the house and force them to play all day, every day his own weird lifestyle rules and played mind games that bordered on brainwashing with his musicians. But it resulted in an interesting work of art. Sadly, Sid Barrett's schizophrenia was exaggerated by his drug use, and he uh, left Pink Floyd. The music of the Shags. By all accounts, their voices are painful. Dot and Betty's guitars are cheap and off-key. Helen's drums have no consistency and jump from rumbling rolls to soft and stuttering taps for no apparent reason. The shags are literally the sound of teenagers without any training who are suddenly tasked with creating pop tunes. Jad Fair, a big inspiration on Nirvana, is an American musician who plays in the band Half Japanese. His songs are strange and unclassifiable. And He's a visual artist, too, like Wesley Willis. Here's some paper-cut art by Jad Fair. Kind of have a Keith Haring-esque quality to them, I think. Daniel Johnston recorded hundreds of songs and made drawings. He casually discussed how Satan haunted him, and he looked forward to the afterlife where he would tour with the Beatles. He counts among his fans Kurt Cobain and Built to Spill, and he recorded with Jad Fair. You can grow to love any music with repeat listens, and you can choose to appreciate any visual art with focus and effort. It's up to you to determine what you find beautiful or enjoyable. No one can tell you that the stuff you like isn't good. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. 